Hey, what is up guys? How is our day going? Welcome back to part two of the Ryzen build, in which case, in which case, well in this case, the Air 740, we've actually got together and we put a Ryzen 1700 with a GTX 1080 Ti, and we're going to see uh, whether the results are actually pleasing. But if you do want to see how we put this system together and all the parts that are in this system, then please head over to the eye in the top right hand corner where you will find that video. But in this video, as I say, we're actually going to see whether the 1080 Ti will be bottlenecked by the Ryzen 1700. And you may be thinking this is a bit of an unfair test, and to that I would say that you are right in a sense, but then again, when you're thinking of the amount of money that you could spend to get a better CPU, so say you want the 1800X, that's around about an extra £170, that is the difference between a 1080 and a 1080 Ti. So in actual fact, there will be people wondering whether it's worth sticking with a 1080 and then getting an 1800X, or whether it's worth doing it the other way around, like we've got here. And then truth be told, the other reason that this video isn't including uh, well, this video is having a little bit of an unfair comparison is because it was meant to be a three-way originally with the 7700K, the 1700, uh, then the 6900K, but my i7 from Intel actually turned out to be an i3 when I put it in my system, which was obviously very annoying. So I do apologize about that, but there's not really anything else I can do. And so to test this system and put it through its paces, I've done a series of tests. Some are synthetic, some are for gaming, and then some are for workloads. The first test is the Cinebench test, and it's worth noting that these are all going to be stock results, but I have overclocked the system and will give those to you a little bit later in the video. So, results are on a bit of paper here, and the Cinebench score of this Ryzen chip was 1375. And this is significantly better than the i7-7700K was when I tested that earlier in the year. Even overclocked to 5.1 GHz, this is still superior. And that is to be expected because of course this chip is an 8-core chip, whereas the i7 is only a 4-core chip. But it's running at a higher clock speed, so that may well come into play a little bit later in some of the other tests. Now, for my 2-minute 4K render test, this rendered it out in just under 3 minutes in 2 minutes 57. Moving on to some other tests though, the SSD in this system, which is stupidly quick and it came in at a read-write speed of 3240 and 1579 respectively. So if you've got any serious applications that you really do need the utmost speed for, then this is going to suit you very nicely indeed. But if you just want a faster boot time, faster game load times, this will provide it to you as well. And then moving on to the gaming tests in 3D Mark, we got a score of 9,204 uh, in 3D Mark, uh, with a CPU score of 6,944. So this is sort of an interesting area because this 3D Mark Time Spy runs at 1440p. It's a fairly high resolution. Obviously, it's not as high as 4K or anything like that. But actually, it ran 3D Mark not too badly at all. And if you do compare it against some other tests from 4-core chips, you may be surprised that uh, there isn't too much in the way of differences. But unfortunately, as we move towards the real-world gaming tests, we start to see the results become bottlenecked by this CPU. Now, let me once again reiterate the fact that I know this is an unfair test. This isn't meant to show that the 6900K is a better CPU. It costs three times the amount of money. We knew that already. The point of this test is to show you that this GPU is being bottlenecked by the processor. And if you are buying this system with this GPU, you have to be aware of that. It's not all doom and gloom though, because it's less pronounced at high resolutions. The resolution I'm running here is just a little bit below 4K. So if you do run this at 4K, then chances are you're probably going to be absolutely fine because your monitor is probably going to have a refresh rate of 60 Hertz anyway. And so it's not really going to make too much difference because the theoretical CPU frame rate is going to be higher than 60 in most titles anyway. But of course, it will depend on the title. But as we move down the resolutions, especially at 1080p, this is not a very good choice at all. But to be fair, neither is a 1080 Ti for 1080p gaming either. It's just bottlenecking it way too much and this is going to cause you a serious problem and it's going to mean that you're not being able to access the GPU at all. But of course, those were all at stock. They weren't overclocked at all. 
And so now it's time to talk about overclocking because the, all the Ryzen 7 chips are overclockable. So you're going to want to overclock them if you can really to unlock the most amount of performance. And it's a little bit bittersweet because you did see some serious performance gains from overclocking, but I wasn't able to push it that far, which was disappointing. The memory, I wasn't able to access the full speed of the stick. I had to stick with 2400 MHz, which may well be a limiting factor. But my overclock was sadly limited to 3.95 GHz, as if I tried to push for 4 GHz, it simply would black screen uh, whenever I tried to run a Cinebench run. Even with 1.45 uh, volts of electricity, it just wasn't happening, unfortunately. But we do see some serious performance gains here. And again, if you're buying this particular system, you're pairing these things together, you are going to see some bottlenecking and the 6900K is gonna perform better. But realistically, you're able to get a lot of performance out of a chip that costs 330 pounds. And if you are a streamer, then actually this is looking very promising indeed. But if you are run wanting to run a 1080p monitor and game off it um, at a refresh rate over say 144 hertz, then this isn't a very good choice for you at all, as a lot of games were limited here even when the chip was overclocked. And so, there you go, that's the performance of the system. It's fairly balanced, I mean, unlike the 7700K, which is gonna be fantastic for gaming and good for work, this is fantastic for work and then good for gaming. It sort of switched around a little bit. But unfortunately, the point of this video, will a 1080 Ti be bottlenecked by a Ryzen 1700? The answer is yes. So if you've got an extra £200 to spend and you're wondering whether to upgrade that CPU or upgrade that GPU, the answer is still not completely clear cut. If you're running at a higher resolution, then it may well be worth going for the 1080 Ti, but for everyone else, it's probably worth looking at a different CPU um, because you're going to be able to unlock a higher frame rate as a result, but it all depends entirely what you want to do with this chip. A massive thank you to you guys for watching. Let me know where you want me to go from here. Once again, I apologize I didn't have the i7-7700K to test directly against. It was out of my hands. I really did try. Um, like I say, there's not really much more I can do about that. If you have enjoyed this video, please like it. If you haven't, dislike it. Thanks to Corsair for sponsoring the channel and to everyone that supplied parts for this build. It's really appreciated. So that's Asus, uh, AMD, um, who else? Corsair, Crucial, Cooler Master, it's really appreciated. But yeah, if you want to check out the products that were featured in this video, though, they'll be down in the description below. If you want to see the review of the 1080 Ti, I'll leave that in the top right-hand corner as well. Massive thank you once again, and I'll see you in the next video.